Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Morale Booster with John Ugulu. And today I have an implementation coach, and his name is Carlos Camelo. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. First person that did it right on the first time. Wow, awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome, uh, Carlos. And my viewers are eager to know who Carlos is. So can you please tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, well, first, uh, thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor, humbled. So, um, but who am I is really simple. I'm, I'm a father of six. My wife and I, six. yeah, six kids. <laughs> and uh, that's the first reaction people get, like, well, you, do you know what caused it? And uh, do you have a TV? And the answer is yes to all of that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my wife and I have been married 20 years. I got um, very lucky 20 years ago. Mm. And, um, and, I met and you, don't, you don't look it. You look, you look so young, like. <laughs> Flattery gets you everywhere in life, man. I really appreciate that. Right, right. But uh, I'm, I'm 38, soon to be 39. So we started awesome. early. Oh, you know, okay. When you know you have what you need and, and what you want, you don't let go. So I did, I worked really hard to keep my lady around. That's but, true. Uh, yeah, man. So six kids. I'm a father of six, husband. Um, you know, I, I'm a guy, if you had to say, you know, how do I describe myself? Who am I, man? That, that's just really what, what it is. I'm a father. I'm a father. I'm a coach. And, uh, and I love sports. And, oh, okay. I, and I'm an amateur cook, right? Like, uh, if worse cooks in America, you know, I, I might qualify for that. But uh, in my mind, I'm better than Gordon Ramsay, you know. <laughs> you know, that's the most important thing, you know, self-confidence, you yeah. know, self-validation. That's, well, that's key in life. It is, man. Uh, you know, I get that from my, my parents. My dad is a, he's an incredible human. Um, both my parents are, but he's a former Air Force CIA Okay. My, my mom, you know, my mom, my real bi biological father passed away when I was one. So my mom, yeah, she raised me until, she, well, until five. And then she met my dad, the man that would go on to raise me. I call my father. And, you know, when so you. So sorry about that. Oh, uh, you know, I, thank you. But um, if that didn't happen, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Right. And, um, and so if that doesn't happen, I wouldn't have come here to the U.S., I wouldn't have learned, you know, how to, how to overcome. And I watched that from my, my mom and you gotta have a, you gotta be a pretty confident yet stubborn in a healthy way to <laughs> come over here as a single mom, not know the language. And you, you gotta have a certain belief in yourself that you're doing things the right way. And so that's where that confidence comes from. So that's, that's a good one. I see now, yeah. now I, now I see where that comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she's incredible. She was, uh, you know, you, you learn a lot from her, man. She's, she's feisty. Right, 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 right. Yeah, kudos to her, you know, for raising such a, an ambitious man as yourself. And I know your wife is a very lucky person. Or should I say you are the lucky person to have found her? No, no, she is my better half. All right. So we don't even, we don't need to even get that twisted. <laughs> you know? But I am pretty, but she is pretty lucky to have me, right? Like, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, look, that. That's my girl. She's my ride or die, my best friend. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade life for anything else. It's been a, you know, marriage is, is just like any business in life. It's just like anything, right? It's, it's a series of events that you grow through. Right. And, and it only, you only persevere. And it's a journey too, right? It's, there's no, there's no destination because. That's true grow and change over time. So, you know, one of the things I, I typically tell business owners as I work with them and people is you're managing two businesses, the business you are right now and the business mm -hmm. you're becoming. Right. And in a relationship, it's the same thing, right? It's the moment you got to be present and enjoy it, but we're also going to grow and get older and change. And when yeah. you, you know, the same thing that it takes to make a good relationship, it's what it takes to be a good influencer, leader, business owner, right? Great communication. Right. You got to have a clear vision for the life you want. So, Right. That's an institution where when you get in, there's never a certificate. Correct. To show completion. Yeah. And there's it's, no, it's ending, a lifetime right? journey. Yeah. And we don't get in it to, we don't get in it going, if it doesn't work out, then I have an exit strategy, right? Just like when you go into business, if you have an extra strategy, you've already failed. Right. You dive in going, there's no way I'm going to lose. So let's go learn. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one. Thanks. So um, regarding your um, coaching, 
Yeah. What areas precisely do you um, work on? Yeah, we focus on the two, two major areas of life that produce the greatest reward, the least amount of stress. When you have them under control, when they're out of control, they produce the most stress, <laughs> right? which is uh, relationship and finances. Okay, relationship and finance. That's okay. right. So we focus yeah. really on those two areas. Um, the term relationship is everything, right? Um, there's yeah. a relationship between the person that you look in the mirror every day, which is the most important one. That's you. And, right, that is huge, <laughs> right? Because uh, who you, what you, the life you live is a reflection of the life that you are. Right. The, the law of attraction is so powerful. So we focus, we start from there, build a solid foundation, and then we help expand it in every other relationship. And then finances, right? And I think sometimes we look for the magic pill. But finances are, it's the easiest math equation in the world. Right. How much money do I make? So how much money's coming in and how much money leaves, right? What are my, what are my expenses, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then when I have money, it's just a tool, right? A hammer will build a house or break a window. It just depends on what's your vision for it. So right. we, we start with focusing on, you know, hey, here's a budget. Let's take the money that you have extra. And let's, let's put a plan in place to help it leverage your goals and your visions for your life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and let's take the, let's remove emotion from, from money because I think that's what happens, right? Like we work really hard and man, I deserve this. <laughs> I deserve, I deserve that ice cream after I go to the gym, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So, uh, <laughs> so we, we, we work on really hard on putting goals in place so that we, we remove this. I want emotion and replace it with, Oh man, I'm on my way. I'm hitting my goals. I'm going to stay yeah. disciplined because, man, I see the light, you know? And right. then the math equation just kicks in because it's simple math at that point. Right. So those are the two major areas that we work on, and that's the foundational principles that we use to guide how we move forward with them. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's a good one. Yeah, because I, I do more of mindset coaching as well, you know, because a healthy mindset is key. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, yeah, oh. I... I Okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, it's all about your mindset, right? So, because it's how you approach, how you approach everything is how do you think about everything. Right. How you think determines your, your actions. Your actions determine your character. It determines your habit or your habits, then your character, and then that determines who you are. So, we gotta think. We gotta not reprogram. I think of it more as unlearn, and then relearn, right? And so right. we got. We have to start with how do we think and how do we see things. So we, I always look at it like, how do I see the scenario? And then I, I run it through a filter, my thought process. Right. And, then, and then here comes this, this result, right? So, so when we work with folks, that mindset is, it's really all that we talk about because um, we never want to tell people what to do because then it's our decision, right? It's, it's our outcome, right? We want people right. to have ownership because we want them to own the, the, the success and they got to own their failure because they also learn from that, correct? Right? So. True. So we think about like an opportunity presents, the, presents itself mm -hmm. and an opportunity is, is everything, right? Do, how do I go out today? How do I dress? How do I impress somebody? How do I have a conversation? What word choice do I have? How do I react to scenarios? So there's this opportunity presents itself every day. Right. And then in the middle, there, we're going to talk about that in a second. And then there's a decision that comes from that. So what we work on is the mindset. So the middle part, we'll, we'll call that the filter. Yeah. So when an opportunity presents itself, what filter do you run that through to make a decision? And to us, we start with our, with our thought process, our mindset, how do we view it? And, our, and, and one of the things that we really focus on for us and what we've learned through trial and error, through, through intense coaching, if you will, right? Yeah. Through, through humility of life uh, <laughs> is that you, when your filter for making decisions is built upon solid principles and values, Right. Will always produce a good decision. A good decision doesn't mean it's going to work all the time. Yeah. It means, it means you're you're going to have a decision that will allow you to either learn or grow, and those are the two best. Those are the two best results that you can think of. You know, in in, my, in our opinion, at least my opinion. Right. 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 Yeah. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. That's basically what people need to learn. You know, a lot of people find it difficult to work on that filter right because we receive a lot of data a lot of information a lot of ideas but the most important thing is having a thought process 
a thought process that would help you eliminate limiting beliefs, a thought process that would help you remove whatever mental block that would stop you from achieving your goals. You know, when people learn all these things, life becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting things, you know, loving yourself just right. the way you would love others. Yeah. So first of all, take good care of yourself. Know that you are a reflection of your thoughts. So I like what you said about, you know, the demonstration. It's a yeah. good one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, man. It, it, it's, um, it's this filter, right, of limiting beliefs and all that, right? But when you think about who we are as people, as, as humans, you know, when we're everything that we know and how we think, we learned it. Yes. And it's about understanding the human brain. And so this is one of those things where I really dive deep into and understanding the subconscious brain. It's, it's, it's our operating system. It is our cruise control for life, right? right. Our subconscious brain to, b breathes for us, blinks for us, thinks for us. And it's based on our experiences, right? Because can you imagine getting in the car? And at first, it's stressful. Because when you first learn how to drive, you have to, you, you have to make all these decisions that you have never thought of before, right? Right. And over time, before you know it, you know, I may have done this. It's, it hasn't been proven, but you might be driving, texting, emailing, you know, on the phone and eating at the same time. Right. You know, the first time, you know, switching lanes gave you like a heart attack, right? So, so it, it just proves the power of, of what our subconscious brain can do. It also proves the power of habits. Yes. And, and you can relearn, you can really relearn anything. Um, it's just understanding that it, it, it will take a little bit of, of practice. And the practice is nothing more than what comes in also will, will be what comes out. So if we sit right. down and we watch a bunch of, uh, nothing's wrong with television. There's nothing wrong with entertainment. Um, if entertainment is more than positive information and a way to think and learn and, and a different perspective, then we're, we're left to the whole world is the one that's teaching us how to think. Right. And, um, and then when do we develop our own thought process? <laughs> when do we develop our own filter? What principles do we apply, right? So mm -hmm. one of the things I, I, first question I ask people when they sit down with me is, who were you before the world told you who to be? Right. Who did you think you were before the world told you who to be? Uh, and most people have, you know, it really catches them off guard because they've never been asked, who are you as a person? Right. We start working backwards, right? And we start thinking, okay, well, what do you want? How do you want life? And, and how do you want your, your end game to look? Begin with the end in mind, as everyone says. So really simple. And it sounds a little bit morbid, but it, it's not meant to be. It's if you don't know what you want out of life, well, what do you want your kids to say about you at your funeral? Yeah. How, do you, how do you want them to describe you? Yeah. Right? Well, That's then, a good that, question. Right? And then, cool. Once you get an answer, then let's start every day taking the steps to make that person come to life. Right. And what do we need to do, right? The average millionaire reads or CEO reads 60 books a year. Mm -hmm. They're pretty successful. They're pretty confident in who they are. Right. So it's not about reading. It's about the information that it, that, that it comes in, right? It's about saying, no, brain, I'm going to stop. I'm going to open up a book, and I'm putting new information in. And, um, and then start the rewiring and the relearning so that that filter becomes so solid that my subconscious brain and my habits just start kind of going on autopilot. And over right. 10 years, you'll look back and go, holy cow, man. That, man, that I am the person I am today yeah. would have intimidated the person I was 10 years ago. Right. The person I was 10 years ago would be intimidated by the person I am today because I'm I'm pretty confident in who I am and what I stand for. Yeah. And that's um it all starts with with that thought process, right? Um and I also think most people know how to win because life life leaves clues, right? When you think about it, John. Yeah. Um, if we take a step back and we say, okay, when in my life have I been the most successful? Who was, who was influencing me? Right. So what coach, what mentor, who was guiding me? What, what were they teaching me? And what actions did I take? What habits was I, was I operating on? Okay, and that produces good success. And yeah. then you go back and you go, okay, so now I have a, a blueprint for how to be successful that fits me. You right. have the same pattern in your life. 
And then you go back and you say, okay, now when I didn't, when I wasn't as successful or as proud of the results that I produced, what was the pattern? Who right. was I not listening to or who was influencing me, right? That maybe, maybe shouldn't have. Yeah. Was I reading? What was I, how was I educating? And between those two, you know, it's very easy for people to go, oh, wow. One, I have success. I know how to win. Yeah. So as long as I pick the right path, then I will always be successful. Right. So, so for us, when, when I sit down and work with people, that's why we, I don't really t show them how to do things. Yes. Yeah. It is more as a reminder of like, okay, we're the GPS. And the GPS, you know, I always think of like when you open Google Maps, right, or Waze, it does whatever. When you open it up, John, yeah. what is it? It is a direction. It gives you direction. Right. But when you first open it up, it's just a map. Right. It only works when you put the directions in. Yeah. Right? And so what's cool about it is once the directions are put in, it doesn't drive the car for you. No. You it have to take control of that. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. It, it just leads you to your destination. Yeah. All it does is say, and even if you go off course, it let, the GPS allows you to go off course. It then says, hey, now that you're on this path, you got to redirect so that you can hit your goal and right. your destination, right? right? And so that's that's a lot of the mindset stuff that we that fascinates me and I look at because um because that's like the easy stuff to me. Yes. The hard part is doing it yourself every day and the discipline to go out. <laughs> steps. That's just hard, right? Going to the gym is not hard. But it's making hard. it a lifestyle is hard. But yeah, right, to, to go in and lift the weight every day at five o'clock in the morning, we, we may have a different discussion about that. <laughs> you're, very, you're very correct about that one. Yeah. You know, so I, I keep telling uh, the people that work with you as well, and also for uh, my viewers out there, I want you to also understand that whatever you put your mind towards, it's easier for you to achieve it when you have somebody who holds you accountable to your uh, mm -hmm. dreams, to your goals. That's why we have life coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people feel they can do things on their own, but they don't even try to go an extra length to work with a coach. Whether you like it or not, when you work with a coach, mm -hmm. a coach will be able to provide you with the tools required for you to succeed. Mm -hmm. A coach will not tell you what you need to do because you are going there, you know what you need to do. But the coach will only provide you with the tools you require. Like what my uh, friend just said, having a navigation. Yeah. All you do is you know where you're going, which is you having the goals. Mm -hmm. having the dreams, the aspirations. Yep. All you need to do is to put it into the navigation and it leads you there. Just like he says, if you miss your direction, you will definitely realign. Why? Because you already have a destination. So it has the, the, the technical know-how to help you realign with your goals. Yep. That's the importance of having a, a coach, a life coach. A lot of people keep asking me, why do I need a life coach when I can go to a therapist? I said, no, <laughs> two, two different people, two different descriptions, two different designations, two different areas completely. So for those of you watching this program now, please feel free to reach out to Carlos. Carlos, do you have a telephone number where people can reach out to you? Yeah. Best thing to do is shoot me a text. Uh, I'll call back. Uh, my phone number is 225. 955-2722. That's 225-955-2722. All right. So just give it a try. You know, most of the things a lot of people know are things they learned while they were growing up. Mm -hmm. So we should have the ability to re unlearn and relearn. Yep. That you're 100% you're right. I mean, it's like, Picking a coach is the most important. Having a, picking the right GPS, right? That's what I call a coach. It's so important. And so it's about understanding, you know, first of all, if I'm here in the U.S. and my goal is to go to Europe, right? right? Uh, most people would say, I need a plane. And I would argue with them. I not only need a plane, I need a pilot. Because unless I know how to fly the plane, 
the plane will sit in its runway, right? So I need to know where I'm going. And then more importantly, when I pick a coach, do they have results in the areas that I'm trying to accomplish results in? Because I know you can't tell, but I don't have a six pack. So if you want to be a, if you want to lose weight, I am not the guy. Um, and I, and I'm okay with that. It doesn't make me less of a person. It just means I'm not. But, in that. but you still need to let them know that there is a difference between a coach and a mentor. A hundred percent correct. Right. So if you're looking for a mentor, that's a different discussion entirely. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a, a life coach or a life strategist, that's a different discussion entirely. If you're looking for a therapist, so education is key. A lot of people need to know the difference between all these. Mm -hmm. A life coach would not tell you what you need to do because you, every human being knows what he or she needs to do. Yes. The life coach will just be the person who will provide you with the tools required for you to achieve your own goals. That's right. And in your personal life, right? Not business, not work, because that would be called a work coach, not a life coach, right? right, right. And so when you, when you look at that, I mean, I hit, you hit the nail on the head. I sit down with folks all the time and, and they're just like, I just need someone to tell me what to do. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> the last time someone told you what to do, your parents, you got really mad at them, and your yeah. boss, you do, didn't say good things about them. So why would you want someone to tell you what to do, right? And it's like they have all the tools, like they said, like their life success told them the good and the bad, right? So it is very important to say, why do I want to be mentored? Because mentorship is the GPS holistically, mm -hmm. right? I think it's important for someone to have to go think of it as partnership, right? Right? Shared accountability responsibility and profitability because then I guide you in every area and I have a, I have a vested interest in success holistically. Right. Uh, and also the proper mentor will never, will not try to tell you how to do everything. They're, they're, they're very self-aware and go, you know, I'm not an expert in that field. I think you need to maybe go and find someone that can guide you there. And then, and then whatever you learn, hey, can you teach me back? Because I want to grow as a person too, right? Right, right. It's so important, John. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's, that's, that's who we are. We are servant leaders. Mm -hmm. That is key. You first, me second. Together <laughs> we win, right? Exactly. You, discover, you discover your purpose in life when you're busy serving other people. Right. Because we define success. It's the number one thing that we... We, my wife, when I say we, my wife and I, we determine success is, is how many people are better off because you lived. Right. And our legacy for our kids, see, we got to make a living. And so we do have to go earn income. Yes. Our legacy that we live for our kids is when we leave the house, do we earn income because by building someone else's dreams or do we go out and earn an income by helping other people accomplish their goals and dreams? Right. How, how do we make a living? How do we define that? Because at the end of the day, when, when that happens, then, you know, if you think about it on, on a utopian world, if everyone is always trying to help everyone, the only way to do that is to put my ambition, my goals, my views to the side. I have to stand next to you and see the path that you see. That means I have to under, take time to understand, not judge. I have to love, I have to show care and an interest and go, wow, oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you see it that way. Let's walk this path together. Right. And you start removing some of these ugly words like hate, judgment, and you remove them from the vocabulary. And before you know it, you're creating something that you can be proud of, right? Right, right. Less right. regret on that. When that day comes, there'll be less regret. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So that's why I say, <clears throat> I, I keep asking people like, for instance, what, what, what makes you motivated when you do not feel motivated? First of all, for me, waking up every day knowing that I have a lovely family, I have a wife, I have wonderful kids, knowing that I inspire people on a daily basis, that gives me a whole lot of joy. So when you ask me what motivates me when I do not feel motivated, I know waking up to inspire my family having a lovely family, inspiring people is key. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, that's uh, my goal when I was younger was to be a high school basketball coach and a math teacher. Oh, okay. But, but mainly it was about giving back, right? So what's the motivation? It's simple. It's I, my motivation is to honor my commitments. 
not to hit my goals, but to honor my commitments. And I committed to my wife to be the best version of man that she could depend on. I committed to my kids that I would be a dad that they could be proud of and I would prepare them to not be, to be great adults, which, cause they're going to be adults more than they're going to be longer than they're going to be kids. Yeah. And I commit to the people I work with that I will always be ready for what they need. I'll be there for them. Right. They'll, they'll quit before I quit. Right. And so when you think about that, okay, well, that's great. That's what gets me out of bed when I don't want to. And then what brings me joy is when other people start winning. Yeah. Right. You, you go, man, you, that this is their victory and you get right. more excited for their victory right. than, like than ours. And you're just like, heck yeah. High five. <laughs> let's do this. You know, yeah. it's like, keep going. Now we got another goal to hit. Let's, let's set a new goal and let's just kick butt, rock and roll. And life <laughs> is groovy at that point, man. You know? That's true. That's true. So what's your advice to those people who, um, are not or people who think less of themselves, people who want more for themselves, but they feel they cannot achieve what they want. What's your advice for them? Yeah, so maybe someone that's a A player that's stuck in a B game. <laughs> exactly. Right? Well, someone, you know, I would look at them and I would say, do you feel that way because of you? Or do you feel like that because someone else told you that? Exactly. Right? Because um, you are in life because of the decisions you make and the people you surround yourself with. Right. And so it's, a, I would, first of all, I would say congratulations. That is, is huge for recognizing where you're at. And uh, because you can't do anything until you, you'd be a little level of honesty, right? right. Now you got to make those, I don't consider them tough choices. Either you're in life where you want to be or you're not. And you're in life where you want to be because of the people that you surround yourself with. Yes. Right. And because of the decisions you make. So to me, it's only two things. We only have to make two different decisions every day. Right. I got to surround myself with people that are in life where I want to be. More importantly, the, the, that have the principles and values, right? Because principles and values aren't defined by materialistic things. They're yeah. defined by those things that speak to our soul, that internal moral compass that says, yes, I'm on the right way or Right. Ah. <laughs> and then maybe words that we shouldn't say are what goes on in our brain, right? So we got to surround ourselves with people that have the morals, principles, and values, because then when we make decisions, we'll be proud of them, right? right? And so we have to make different decisions, and we got to surround ourselves with different people. You know, I, I was a 19-year-old kid who smoked a joint a day, a blunt a day, mm-hmm. because that's what my friends did. Yeah. Um, the minute I surround myself with people that, that had a higher moral compass and I'm not, not moral compass all high and mighty, but that had a more goals, ambition level, et cetera. All of a sudden the way I, I saw things began to change. Yes. So people are like elevators. Some will take you up, some will take you down and some are going to leave you there. And right. every day you either let people in on your elevator or you join someone's elevator. Right. right. Um, titles, family, boss, friends, they're just titles. They can easily be replaced. I know that because my father wasn't my biological father. He's the man that earned that right to be called my father by the way he acted every day. Right. And then decisions are simple. You know, how, how do you want to live your life? And every day you make a decision and that decision will either bring you further away from that or it'll bring you closer to the life that you want. Right. right? So if you're not happy with yourself, it's okay. Say what kind of if you're a, if you're a lady, what kind of man would you would, would you love to marry? What you know, and you'd have those qualities. And every day, just say, okay, today I'm gonna do one thing to become the lady that attracts that man. If you're a guy, what kind of uh, what kind of dad, what kind of husband do you want to be? What kind of lady, what kind of queen do you want to attract into your world? It's really simple. Take a step every day to be that. You know, if that confuses people, it's really simple. You know, hey, would you want your daughter to marry a guy like you? <laughs> and if the answer is no, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Take one step to every day to become the man that you can be proud of so that your daughter sees an example and vice versa. And so that's to me like the simple stuff that start. Those folks that go, man, I, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're comfortable with who they are. They're proud of themselves, but they want more out of life. That's right. awesome. Okay. It's really simple. You got to make a different decision because you're in life exactly where you're at. Not making a decision is making a decision not to make a decision. So if you want more to life, great. What does more to life mean? Write it down. Look at it every day. 
And little by little, I believe that when you, when you commit, you write your, you write your goals, you speak your words of affirmation, and you start to define it, before you know it, you begin to attract and opportunities open up because you're starting to look at it. Like when you buy a new car, you see that car everywhere. Yes. And it's no different for those people that want more out of life. Right. And it's really simple. Like it goes back to the same thing. Well, what, what arena do you want to play in? Right? Because you look around and if, if everyone you know is in the same arena as you, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with them as humans. You just got to surround yourself with people that can bring you up. If my goal is to play in the NBA, right. I can't stay practicing at the YMCA with, with people. That are, <laughs> I, I got to elevate and practice around other NBA players right. just because iron does sharpen iron. And so, I, you know, that's a long-winded version to your very simple question. That's it. That's a, that's a very brilliant answer. I, I love that answer. You know, so basically what you're saying is, First of all, they need to identify their core values. Mm -hmm. When you identify the core values and you want to actually take action, you should always make sure you network with the people who can get you closer to that goal. Mm -hmm. So if you are having some limiting beliefs that makes you feel you cannot achieve or get to where you would love to be, then you are the cause of that problem because the person is not actually networking or hanging out with the right set of people who can inspire that person to do that. So having the core values, identifying and eliminating limiting beliefs, networking, taking action, which is key. Yep. So for example, somebody who says he or she is tired of a particular job and he or she knows he needs to take a certification to get the job he or she wants. When that person procrastinates, the person definitely would not be able to take that certification. So that is why you need somebody who would always hold you accountable and remind you and provide you with the tools you require to get towards that certification. So I really do understand everything you've said and my viewers I know would absolutely understand and like what you have just advised them to do you know so i really thank you for joining me on this program i will be reaching out to you from time to time i hope when next i call you you will be more than willing to come back oh i'll be happy to again it's an honor and uh it's you and i are similar values and i am i'm just humbled that you would take the time to reach out sure. I, hope, I hope i brought as much value to you as as you do every day and uh, yeah, it's, it's been a true pleasure on my end. Absolutely. You brought so much value. You know, we rise by lifting others. Yes. So we thank, we thank, I thank you for coming on the program. My pleasure. All right.